Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 3, Episode 25, The Fugitive, written by Charles Beaumont and starring J. Pat O'Malley as Ben and Susan Gordon as Jenny. And this is a uh, perfectly uh, average Twilight Zone episode. It's a very good example of just a, an average episode. So we start with a group of kids playing baseball and there is a girl uh, named Jenny there who has a leg brace. She will be one of our main characters. And there is also an old man playing with them. Uh, his name is Ben. And this guy goes up to bat. And, I mean, he really crushes the ball. And one of the kids says, it's no fair. You know, you used magic. So we find out that this guy can use magic for some reason. Then they decide to play a game of Spaceman. And uh, Ben turns himself into an alien and then turns himself back. Uh, you know, into Ben. So this is just pretty much setting up the rest of the episode and the kind of powers that Ben has. So then we go to a scene after the opening narration where we have Ben and Jenny talking, and you can tell they're friends. And he helps her up the stairs, and she wants to know why her leg can't be fixed. And, you know, he doesn't really give a reason other than he shouldn't do it. Then they're uh, interrupted at the door by uh, Jenny's aunt, who we learn looks after her. And this woman is just really uh, crabby and kind of nasty, even. I mean, her and Ben argue about Jenny. You know, he takes the blame for her being late. She doesn't want to hear it. She threatens to call the police on him if he ever sees her again, which seems a bit harsh. I mean, did Jenny really do anything that bad? So that, you know, she basically uh, yells at Jenny, and that's that. So then uh, she hears a knock at the door, the aunt does, and there's two, these two men, and they're looking for old Ben. And they start asking questions about him, like how long he's lived there, if, they, if she knows his previous address. And then they ask if he does any magic. And uh, Jenny hears this conversation, and she's concerned, and she runs to tell Ben. So, um, you know, he says... Uh, you know, I'll have to leave now, I'll have to go hide somewhere. So we go to the next scene, and Ben is gone, and Jenny is there by herself. The men and the aunt come, but they can't find him. And then the aunt is really mean to Jenny again. i really not sure what this woman's problem is. She's a bit over the top. Uh, I think her character's a bit over the top as well. And then uh, we find out that Jenny's been hiding Ben in her hand as a mouse. So he turns back to normal. And, you know, Ben actually tells Jenny, you should forgive your aunt, which I thought was pretty admirable and shows his character. So um, then Ben basically has to tell Jenny his story as she goes to see him. He says he is from another planet and the two men want him back. And, you know, he's in hiding and he'll have to go somewhere else. He then fixes Jenny's leg and he leaves. So... Jenny runs after him, very upset. She runs into the two men who zap Jenny. I'm not sure if they zap her or what they do, but she's pretty much out cold. So then we go back to her room, you know, where she lives, and there's a doctor there. He explains to the aunt, who, who to her credit, does seem somewhat genuinely concerned at this point. He explains to her that the leg is fine somehow, but that he can't explain what's wrong with her, but that she's in serious condition. So that takes us uh, to the climax of the episode where Jenny wakes up and there's a fly in the room and we know it's Ben who turns back into himself or what we think is himself and Jenny explains basically, you know, what happened to her that she ran after him and she passed out and she doesn't really know from there. So, you know, Ben uh, somehow heals her. This is never really explained either, either, but she says she feels a lot better. But then they realize that the two men are watching them, and they call Ben your majesty. So then Ben has to explain his story. He really has no choice at this point. He explains he's really a king, and I guess basically he was just tired of being a king, and he has like 4,000 more years before he can pass it off to someone else. I did think that was genuinely funny. So he was looking for a break, but, um, you know, the men said everyone at the kingdom wanted him back, so they were basically on a mission to find him. So Ben says, you know, he has to go back. He really doesn't have a choice. Why, I'm not sure, but that's what he said, so I'll go with it. And we find out that Jenny can't go with him, even though she really wants to. Uh, the men say it wouldn't be allowed. 
So the two of them come up with a plan. They say, leave us alone for a minute. And when the men come back, there are two Jennies, but one of them is really Ben, and they don't know which is which, so they have no choice but to take both back. So it's a happy ending in the Twilight Zone for Ben and Jenny. This episode is just very average. Parts of it are very dated. Some of the, the humor's dated. This might have played better at the time, but it's still okay. It's an acceptable you know, like one-time watch episode. I give uh, this episode, The Fugitive, a two and a half out of five. It's it's watchable, but it's nothing great. It's nothing terrible. It's just kind of there. So two and a half out of five for The Fugitive. And as always, thanks for watching.